So before we move on to DER lecture part three, I want to introduce another type of a tool for doing distribution analysis called OpenDSS. DSS stands for Distribution System Simulator, and open refers to the fact that this is an open source tool. You actually can get the code to it, and you can add to it, and kind of customize it in a way. And this is something that was put together by, this presentation was put together myself and some of my former uh, teaching assistants. So as far as what we need to be able to do with interconnect analysis, and I'm gonna kind of focus on PV analysis um, for this example. If we wanna do a system impact study, there's a variety of different steady state calculations we need to do. What I mean by steady state are uh, things we could calculate using phaser analysis. And so when we're running voltage drop or low flow, that's a phaser-based analysis. Uh, short circuit's actually a phaser-based analysis tool. So as far as things we need to be able to do if we're looking at whether we can interconnect a certain size of PV system or not, um, we need to look at things like steady state voltage. Is the PV gonna cause the voltage to go over the 126 volt limit? Are we gonna be overloading pieces of equipment uh, we're also worried about impacts on existing equipment like voltage line regulators, especially when we're talking about impacts at the substation. So at the substation, you're going to have a top of feeder regulation device, which is going to be fairly expensive. And you want to make sure that you're not going to be pu putting increased wear and tear in this device because this would be very costly to have to fix or replace. Um, you could also see increases in line voltage regulator operations. Um, if we had to replace a line voltage regulator, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but you know, we may be talking about $80,000, $100,000, something along those lines. And we may need just to do something as simple as changing out the controller if it doesn't have the capability. And then we talked a little bit about voltage flicker, rapid voltage change, and this is where we're looking at voltage deviation due to PV intermittency, which is linked into cloud cover. If we had wind on our system, then this would be wind gusts. So there's other criteria that we check in a system impact study, but these are some very common types of things we would check out using power flow type of analysis. The problem we run into with using power flow analysis tools is many of the tools we use today do what's called a snapshot analysis. Is you put it in a given loading condition and it gives you the voltage drops and line current flows for that set of loading conditions. And what makes PV system analysis so complicated is that the impact of PV depends on what's going on with the load as well. And so we're historically, we would just look at what's going on at the peak condition, maybe at a minimum load condition. Then you're always also concerned with what's going to be going on when we have PV in the circuit. And sometimes this peak impact occurs at the time where you have the peak PV output, or if it turns out that the PV could contribute to say like a peak value, then you'd have to maybe look at that case as well. And the problem is when you take the combination of the load curve and the PV curve, you don't know exactly when the peak's gonna occur now, unless you go through and look at the two curves in detail. And so if you're using a snapshot type of a program, what you'd have to manually do is you'd have to basically be looking at these two curves and trying to figure out, well, what sort of cases you have to run and if you're talking about like a whole calendar year with different seasons and different levels of um, irradiance during the year, this can get kind of complicated. And so what we're moving toward instead is just being able to do a whole time series of curves. Uh, rather than just doing a snapshot, we're actually doing what's referred to as a quasi-static time series analysis. And so you'll see this term used QSTS, and this will be clear um, when we go through this material. And so in, in this lecture, I'll be talking about the basics of OpenDSS and show you a few examples. In the next lecture, we'll get more specific as far as a lot more details involving modeling the PV. 
but we say we're going to kind of step through some simple examples that you're kind of familiar with first and then show you how we can set up open dss for some of those simpler examples so let's cover the background on open dss first and talk about some of the component modeling and then the second part of the lecture we'll get into the script structure and that'll be reinforced by example one then i'll get into a couple more examples involving that case i built up in the millsoft windmill example earlier this year uh, and i'll add pv to that and we'll see how we can model all that in open dss so why open dss it's it's a very flexible distribution simulation platform for doing all sorts of different types of distribution analysis, especially if you need to do some research on, on some kind of a distribution control, let's say, that would be very hard to model in a tool like Windmill. So this particular tool, OpenDSS, doesn't really have much of a graphic user interface. And a graphic user interface is nice for like a beginner or maybe an intermediate user, but if you're like a, um, a super user, basically the graphic user interface or the GUI limits you in how you can actually use the tool, all right? So a GUI is a good guide for a beginner uh, or kind of middle of the road user. But if you need to do something really complex and say you're a professional and you're running these complicated simulations, they get very hard to do in a tool like, like Windmill. The neat thing about this tool, as the name suggests, is this is a kind of a generic simulator. There's, a, there's an engine, if you want to think about it that way. And what you do is you basically drive this engine with a set of commands. And so the set of commands could be in a, in a script file, and you can customize a script file, and you could feed them into the simulator. And what this will do is it'll initialize, initialize a circuit and it'll run whatever type of study or whatever type of calculation you want. The other thing that's interesting about this type of a tool is you could actually call this from another program. So you can call this from MATLAB, you can call this from an Excel spreadsheet, you can call this from Python. There's all sorts of different ways of calling up this engine. And so if you have a certain way you wanna do circuit analysis, you could program that up in Python and then instead of having you write your own voltage drop study, you can just simply call this DSS engine as a separate module. This is not just for distribution. This could also model transmission, all of the data structure is a little bit more distribution oriented, but you can also model transmission circuits. And this supports a variety of different grounding models. And so we're not limited to assuming an ideal ground like we talked about when we uh, covered the feeder modeling, the, the distribution overhead modeling, and we were assuming ideal connection, we were chrome reducing the neutral out. You can actually model four five wire systems, six wire systems, you can model any combination of wires you want with this particular type of tool. So this tool was started at a, at a company called Electrotech Concepts. Um, this was actually started back in 97 by uh, Roger Dugan and Tom McDermott. Um, Roger Dugan has been with a variety of different companies and he's been involved in doing software development as well. And so they, they put together this tool and Electrotech was doing a lot of projects like in DG. This was about the time that we were starting to get a little bit more serious about interconnecting DG and the distribution circuits. And th there was a realization that the current set of tools really wasn't up to the standard needed to do this particular type of analysis. Uh, and so anyway, um, these gentlemen started developing this tool and it has a lot of object-oriented functionality to it. And now we kind of take this for granted, but back then this was kind of a new sort of a, of a feature. And this was eventually purchased by Electric Power Research Institute in 2004. And so it migrated from Electrotech to EP, uh, EPRI, and this was made open source in 2008. And so this is put up on SourceForge, and you could actually see the, the source code. 
So very popular for consulting projects. If you're an experienced consultant, this may be a tool you would want to use. Um, it's a harder to use tool, but it actually has a lot more functionality. And a lot of our graduate students at state and other universities, even internationally, would use this for doing their master's thesis and PhD work. But it has a lot of interesting applications when we're talking about distributed generation. And so anyway, as far as the types of studies we can run in OpenDSS, um, we can run all the snapshot analysis that gets run into the, with the commercial power flows. And so you could build the circuit. You, there's actually some functionality for allocating load. You can then run a power flow or you can run a short circuit analysis or other types of analysis based on phasers. And then what we're particularly interested in is doing this quasi-static time series analysis. So this is based on phaser calculations. Call it a phaser calculation as soon as we're in sinusoidal steady state. And so we don't have to worry about the transit part of the solution. We're just solving for the steady state portion. That's what we do with phasers. But what we can do is we can do our calculations in time, in time steps and what OpenDSS does is automate this. And so if we want to do a simulation over an hour or for a day, and we want resolution of one hour or 15 minutes or 10 seconds or one second, whatever, those are all valid time steps for doing phaser steady state analysis. And so we may want to run a power flow in increments of five, out, of five minutes to an hour if we want to look at a daily profile. If we're looking at flicker, rapid voltage change, we can run this um, second by second basis. We can do calculations with harmonics. Uh, harmonics is something you could do with sinusoidal steady state analysis. You just have different frequencies, so you can run this at different frequencies. But it will not do time to mate analysis. And so if you wanted to stop, like look at a a capacitor switching and look at the ringing transit associated with capacitor switching, we would need what's called an EMT P uh, program where you have programs like PSCAD. Now, Simulink has a power system um, block set available in Simscape where you could actually do these sort of calculations in, within Simulink, but you're actually solving differential equations then. But what again, what's really neat about this is you can actually call this tool, like say from Excel or MATLAB, whatever. And if you're running this on a PC, like a Windows machine, then if you're say uh, linking one Windows application to OpenDSS, you can actually go through what's called a COM interface to kind of speed up the calls. So rather than going through the, like a file system, whatever, you can actually go through a COM interface. So a lot of, a lot of functionality here. So solution modes that we have, we have what's called the snapshot power flow. This is kind of the, what programs that you're used to using use like Windmill. We can do a direct non-iterative run. So we can actually run one iteration of a power flow if we want to. We could do a daily mode. So this is by default 24 uh, one hour increments, but you can set this, you can customize this. You have a yearly mode. Uh, where you're going through 8,760 hours for the year. Uh, duty cycle isn't something we're as interested. This is sort of like you can customize the time frame. There is a quasi-static mode. Now, when we talk about dynamics, this is dynamics in the sense I can see how things change with time. But again, we're not solving differential equations. We're just solving one set of phasor equations after another. We can do fault analysis. And then uh, there's something called a Monte Carlo study or if I have a circuit, what Monte Carlo does, let's say if you're trying to place a generator, it would automatically try different generator locations based on a Monte Carlo algorithm. And so if you don't know exactly where this is going to go, you could just simply run the Monte Carlo analysis and um, it'll basically go through all sorts of different perturbations as far as possible locations. And then it also does harmonics as well. So anyway, keep in mind that 
this all ha this is all assuming that we're solving phasor equations. In OpenDSS, unlike programs like Windmill, the controller is, is an object that's separate from the device it controls. So within Windmill, the capacitor controls integrating with the capacitor. The regulator controls integrating with the regulator. In OpenDSS, they're separate entities. And so what we would actually have is we could have capacitor banks and line regulators and energy storage devices and inverters and such, but then the controller has to be defined separately. So what you'll see is you see like a set of lines for defining the regulator. You'll see another set of lines for defining the regulator control. And when you have devices like protection devices like relays and reclosers and fuses, these devices are actually going to be modeled as controls on switches. And so a uh, fuse could be kind of viewed as a switch that's monitoring the current, controls monitoring the current, and when the current's high for such and such a period of time, according to the time over current curve, then the switch would open just like a fuse would blow open. Um, so there's a little bit of a difference here from the commercial programs. But again, for the types of studies we do, um, this I say this was originally developed for doing like wind and PV impact studies on distribution. And so uh, again, what you can do is you can start to look at the interaction with the controllers, let's say. Uh, you could use this for modeling distribution automation like automated switching schemes. Uh, you could use this for modeling energy storage distributed on a circuit. You can actually program in like the charge control, charge discharge control algorithm for energy storage devices. You could do what's called a stray voltage calculation where what you're assuming is a neutral wire has a high impedance to the earth ground. So this is kind of characteristic when you have um, agricultural systems, you may not have good ground ties, um, ties between the neutral and the earth ground. And so what you get is you have problems with the touch potential between what you think is actually grounded, but it's not. It's There's a kind of a high impedance connection to true earth ground. We can look at a variety of different unbalanced conditions. We can look at harmonic filters. We could simulate a protection system. I mean, really, you could do anything you want to because through the scripting, you can customize the call of the engine and you can simulate a lot of different types of things. So some example calculations would be, say we're, we're looking at losses. Um, we, we could take a look at losses on the circuit. We can actually look at this over a period of a year. Um, this shows the low deviation over a year. You can see in the summertime that we're kind of peaking out. And then you could take all this information that you get from running OpenDSS, like you look at kilowatt hour losses with respect to time. And you could do things like make 3D plots, which show, well, how does losses change as a function of month of the year, time of the year, and the hour of the day, all right? So a lot of flexibility there. And um, like say, you can generate a lot of different data from this. Or you can look at the impact of PV um, in the time domain over, say, like a two-week period. So I know this is kind of hard to interpret, um, but, but basically what you're looking at in this case is you've got the load profile um, without PV, and you can add in the effect of PV right here, and you can kind of see, well, what would be the impact of a circuit um, over a weekly period? Um, actually, if we're looking at regulator operation, regulator operation is kind of a function of the past operating history of the circuit. So a lot of times, if we we're gonna look at regulator operation, we would actually look at a 48 tower, 48 hour time period, where in the first, 24 hours, we kind of initialize the regulators. And then in the second 24 hours, we see what actually happens. Because if you just start your study out initially, um, the regulator controllers would be a little bit out of whack because you know they have to operate within a certain bandwidth. So unless you're running over a daily cycle, you're not exactly sure what's gonna be going on during the day you're interested in. 
And so a lot of people use these more advanced models um, would actually look at this over two days and then pay attention to what happens on the second day. And then we could even run these studies in one second increments. And this actually shows um, from uh, another data set, you know, what this would, what this cloud irradiance would look like on a second by second basis. And you can see in this case that, you know, we could peak out around one per unit. This is maximum output. And because of cloud irradiance, we can actually drop down to 20% of nominal. And so again, this is, this is causing this flicker or rapid voltage change that we, we talked about before. So as far as getting a hold of this program, you can, you can download this from the EPRI site, but I would suggest you go up to SourceForge and there's an open DSS forum there and you can actually download the latest version from SourceForge. And what's also kind of neat about SourceForge is they also have a support group up here. And so if you had questions about using it, then you can actually post those questions. Now, the people that frequent this platform don't like asking, getting asked really trivial beginner types of questions. And so what I would suggest is you, you spend as much time as you can going over the tutorial material, because that's what the first thing they're going to do. They're going to say, well, did you read this and this? And then if it's a, it's a more complicated sort of problem, then you usually get more online support um, from some of the super users in the group. But when you download this, you not only have the, ex the uh, executable program, but you have a number of different document files. There's a number of different EPRI test circuits, there's IEEE test circuits, there's different sort of examples. So you basically got to go on the documentation on your own. You got to go through all these examples. Uh, and then if you can't figure it out based on that, you can go ahead and ask for help on the forum. Um, also note that there's a training directory on here. Now on the Moodle side, I'll give you a link to a training class that was done at NC State in 2018. Um, but the training folder would have the latest set of PowerPoints on, on using OpenDSS. And then in the document folder, there's a lot of uh, notes in there about modeling certain types of things. And so by anything you could think about for, as a beginning user has already been done before. And so it's just a matter of kind of looking around and trying to find the pertinent document. And then when you get into the um, executable, the executable is OpenDSS. This is actually the engine. And then they have some graphing functionality that's available in this other tool called DSS View. So this would be something like if you wanted to, if you have the coordinates for your circuit, then you could actually kind of come up with some color coded maps. It's not as fancy as a program like Windmill as far as doing the graphics, but it does give you some way of doing some, some colored views, some, some mapping types of displays. This shows the OpenDSS um, standalone um, user interface, and you'll get more exposure to this later on. So I'm not going to go through and talk about the menu item here. But you'll note basically when you pull this up, it looks like an editor, it looks like a text editor. And what you do is you would pull open your script file. And so the script file would be something you, you would create with a text editor, an ASCII text editor. Um, Notepad on a Windows machine would be the text editor. And then basically what you see in here is you see kind of like English style text commands, all right? So these are all strings of commands. And when you pull this up like a second time, it basically just jumps back to the last file you're looking at. But basically it's gonna look like a text editor, but what this does is in, in the Windows commands, and you'll see this in some examples later on, you know, this gives you the Windows um, interface here, it gives you some flexibility as far as looking at components and everything that have been loaded into OpenDSS. So the way you think about this is when it says something like new transformer, where it says something like new wire data, where it says something like, um, new line, what that's doing is that's telling the engine 
to create a new transformer. It's it telling the engine to create a new load. It tells it to create a new line. You're basically loading definitions in the engine. And as long as you don't clear the engine, it stays resident in the engine's model database. And so what you're, you're kind of doing is you're telling the engine, you know, I need this, I need that, I need this. And you use a series of new commands in order to add something new. And if you want to change something, then there's an edit command you would use to change like the parameter of, a, of an object that's already in the DSS database. And so you actually have direct control uh, over the creation of your model and how that model can get updated and used. And then when you're when you're kind of running studies, again, what, what clear does is it clear kind of clears the engine out. And so what you do is you start off by um, creating a new circuit. And then what these redirect lines are is you're basically reading in stuff about your equipment information and your circuit information from different text files. And these all have extensions of DSS. And so what you do is you're reading your wire data, you read reading your line geometry, your line codes, your line information, your transformers, load shapes, et cetera. And you, you can pull this in from different files. Um, you're setting up your voltage bases, um, things like that. Um, you're defining your bus coordinates, et cetera. You may put like a new beater in there. And then basically, if you want to run a study, what you basically do is you're, you're kind of executing all the statements in, a, in this file this, that you're editing. And what you could do is there's a number of different ways you can do all this. But normally what I would do is I would just select all these commands I want to run and then right click on the pop up menu and just select compile and what that's going to do is going to send all these commands to the open DSS engine and it's going to execute whatever commands you have open in this window. So that's normally the way I would do it, but there's other other options that you have for actually running studies. So this shows all the different objects that are available in open DSS there's probably a few others, but these are mostly the main ones here. And so you have what's called power delivery elements. I, I would call these branch elements where you have like line. This could be overhead or it could be cable. You have transformers, you have reactors, which are inductors, and you have capacitors. And these could be shunt or series capacitors. And so these are all elements that have like a from and a to node associated with them. And then you have power conversion elements. And so load is a power conversion element. Generator pushes power into the system. You could have a PV system. That's a separate definition. You could have storage. There's probably some other power conversion elements in there. And then for the elements that need controls, then you have standalone control elements. So regular control, cap capacitor control, et cetera. Now, what you also can do to provide more flexibility. If you want data about a particular location in the circuit, then what you can do is you can put in a metering element. And so, you know, this could be a monitor or an energy meter or a sensor, whatever. And so basically, wherever you have a sensor, you get all this additional information when you run through your simulation based on where that metering element's at. So it's not necessarily like running windmill where you just get these standardized reports. You basically can specify at what points in the circuit you want detailed data at and you put monitoring points at those specific locations. And then you have other types of, uh, of equipment objects like, like your line codes or your line geometry. This would correspond like your conductor um, information that you would have like in programs like like windmill you also have like wire data as well um, you can put in load curves and we'll talk about load curves later this is like harmonic spectrum you could put in uh, time overcurrent curves for like fuse characteristics or recloser characteristics and so you have like all these objects that are available in open dss and since this is open source 
you could actually add your own objects if you knew enough about using this program. So in this program, as far as the bus model, um, a bus would be an intersection between two line objects or between a line and a load or a line and a generator. That's going to be a bus. And we've used this before. But bus is different than node when we're talking about OpenDSS, all right? So bus is not the same as a node anymore. Basically, since OpenDSS gives you the ability of working with an arbitrary number of phases, what OpenDSS does is it allows you to find uh, node numbers from zero up to whatever number you want. Now, normally the way we would be doing this would be zero would represent ground, uh, one would represent phase A, two would represent phase B, node three would represent phase C, and node four would represent neutral wire because neutral does not necessarily have to be connected to earth or ground anymore. And so a lot of times we're either going to have like uh, four nodes or five nodes, depending on what we're trying to do. And so if I was going to define a new uh, bus and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to set up a new bus called bus one, then what I would, I could do is I could say, well, bus one is equal to um, having um, a bus name where this is going to have the options of having like a, a node one, a node two, a node three, or a node four, which in this case would normally be uh, ground. So zero is normally referred to as the, um, the ground node. And so this is, this is by default, you know, the way OpenDSS would allow you to set up buses. Um, basically, you know, if we, if I just declared a, a bus one having a certain name associated with it, then by default, it would have three phases in a, a ground connection. Um, so if we're talking about, say, like adding a new load, let's say, then what we would use is we'd use a command new that basically tells the, the engine that we want to set something up new. We're setting up an object of type load, and that's going to be referred to by cons one, say like consumer one. And what we're going to be defining for that consumer is going to defining three phases so we can have imbalance load. And this is going to be uh, connected up to a bus where this is going to be bus L1 and it's going to have three phases of connection, um, nodes one, two, and three. And then the KV associated with this is going to be about 7.2 KV. Uh, I could define another load, call this load one. This is connected up to bus one that says load bus. You note in this case that I didn't um, tell it that it had like three nodes associated with it because that would be the default. By default, it would have the three nodes. And then we could say I've got this three phase kilowatts and power factor associated with that as well. So anyway, it's not important that you know all this detail just yet, but the thing you need to keep straight now is that a bus is not the same as a node. A bus is a connect, a general connect point that connect point could have multiple phases. And, it, and you don't always have three phases. You might just have a single phase or you might have two phases, right? Now, when we're connecting these um, elements together, then at the terminal, again, like I said, you could have multiple connect points, right? A lot of times we'll just have simply connect points one, two, and three. But if you had a neutral wire, this could actually be a, a whole separate connect point. And these circuit elements, again, it could maybe just have one bus associated with it. It might have two buses if it's like a line element. Um, but just kind of keep in mind um, that this is kind of like the general representation we have to track if we're connecting up a line, if we're connecting up a load, whatever. This is, shows a, a power delivery element. 
and this would be like say like a line and the line has a, a from and a two point in open dss lingo you'd have terminal one you'd have terminal two and so i can make my connections up to some other object you know through say like three phases in a neutral wire just three phases if there's no neutral and the other thing um, that you'll note is by definition when we're talking about these elements these these elements on say if you're talking about a branch element either side you could define a switch or you can define a fuse okay as i mentioned before a fuse is basically going to be kind of like a controlled switch um, but basically we don't really have like a separate um, switch element um, we basically we, we kind of model that we can kind of model this within the um, power delivery elements and this particular item right here can also have an, uh, a primitive impedance associated with it and if you take the inverse of the primitive impedance then you get the, the primitive admittance and there's a relationship that basically says that um, the primitive in, impedance times the, the voltage differential is going to give you like the through current. So some examples of bus connections again, um, let's suppose again we're going to have like a, a standard three phase connection if I'm creating a new load. I'm creating a new load, I'm going to call it um, load one. Um, basically what I can do is I can connect it up to uh, bus one, um, and this is we're going to give this a name load bus. And in this case right here, this is just by default three phases. Um, if I have a new load, call it load one, I could explicitly say that this is going to be connected up to this bus called load bus, which is going to have phases nodes one, two, and three. All right. Um, if I'm connecting a single phase load, um, phase two to ground, let's say, then what I could say is I've got a new load. This is going to be a one phase load. The number of phases is equal to one. So again, if it's not the default, you have to basically override that default. So phase is equal to one, and then the bus one connection is going to be to a um, bus called load bus. And note what I'm doing is I'm connecting that between node two and zero, where zero is going to be ground. So this is kind of a connection here, where basically what this load looks like is it looks something like this here. Okay. And this means that you could actually have load connected Y to ground, or you can have loads connected line to line, like in a Delta connection. And then if you had a situation where you had ungrounded Y, that the center point would actually be node four. And so I can actually set something up, a, a three phase load that's ungrounded. And then basically what I could be referring to is um, having a, a load bus name connection that has nodes one, two, three, and four, where four is floating. So this is how you would define a, a floating neutral, let's say. Okay, so anyway, um, we've got all these different object types and everything's gonna be driven by scripts. And so a, a script is basically a sequence of commands. You can enter this in at the within OpenDSS interface, you can put all the stuff in text files and you can load in the text file using the redirect command, or you could actually call this from some other program like MATLAB or using Python um, through using what's called this COM interface. Now this is kind of over and above what we're gonna be using for class. We're not gonna get into calling this from MATLAB or Python, but um, just be aware this capability exists. There's examples, um, in the um, in the downloads, if you download those, be number of examples. I say we have a lot of our graduate students doing this right now, um, but this is a little bit beyond what we're going to do in this class. We're going to just kind of do more basic scripting. But again, you're going to be setting up your circuit. You're going to be defining your control. You're going to be talking about outputs. You're going to want like the sort of voltage, current, power.
power flow reports that you want to get. And then if this isn't really what you need, you can, you can, you can put these different measurements into the circuit at different locations and you can set the definitions up um, for what you want these measurements to capture. And so let's go ahead and stop here. When we come back, I'll, I'll go through a short example. Then.